Hello, welcome back to Decaf Math and welcome, welcome if you are new here. I hope that you are doing very well. Today we are going back, back, back to Decaf Math, even though we took a little loop de loop over to Fuller Calf. It wasn't completely full calf math, but definitely faster than we normally go around here. So today we are going to intentionally relax, relax, relax. So I welcome you to join me and have a little bit of fun with arithmetic sequences. As usual, we are just going to build some intuition. It doesn't matter where you are on your math journey. I just welcome you here to hang out for this little bit. If you want to close your eyes and just drift off, you are more than welcome to, or you can take a little peek and follow along with whatever you feel like. So, I figure we should start off by mentioning what a sequence is, kind of like a sequence of events. How a sequence of events kind of implies an order, right? There's this, then this, then this, then this, then this. Well, sequences for math is going to be like a, an ordered list of numbers. So that's really it. First this, then this, then this, then this. And one very famous sequence goes like this. One, one, then two, then a three then a 5, then an 8, then 13, then 21, 34, 55, and dot, 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 dot. It keeps going. Let me know if you happen to know the name of this beautiful sequence, but that's just one example. A list where it's the first term, then second, then third, then fourth, then fifth, da da da. And as I just kind of implied, since there is an order, we want a way to be able to actually reference the terms, like which term we're talking about. So typically we will write like A, which is just some random, you know, generic variable, but just a1. So a1 is the first term, a2 is the second, a3 would then be the third term of our sequence, dot dot dot, right? So the 1, 2, 3 kind of give us an index. And so our general term will be then general term would then be a sub n. And some computer science folk like to do a0 as the first term, and that leaves a1 as the second, and a2 as the third, etc. That will kind of give you an off by one issue. Uh, for today, we're going to do a1 as the first, a2 as the second, a3 as the third, and so on. So that, you know, like a100 would be the 100th term. That way we don't have to worry about that. But if you're more familiar with this way, you should definitely um, adjust this accordingly, okay? So our index allows us to kind of point at a particular um, term of this sequence, and that will be helpful when we kind of study these a little bit closer. So that's how sequences go in general, and there doesn't necessarily have to be a pattern, so we could have stuff like 2, and then pi, then, you know, negative 1, 0, point 0.2, you know, whatever. Da, da, da. Okay? But, since we are studying arithmetic sequences, as you might guess, that will give us a new set of rules. And all arithmetic sequences are, are sequences where the difference between the terms are a constant number. So if I had, for instance, 2 and then 5, it means I'm adding 
3, right? Or you can think of it as like the difference being 5 minus 2, which is 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Then the next term of this sequence would be 5 plus 3, which is 8. 8 plus 3, which is 11. Very nice. 11 plus 3 is 14. 17. 20. 23, dot, 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 right? So as long as we are adding a constant number or subtracting for that matter, because subtracting is adding a negative number. So we could start with a larger number and keep going, you know, minus, minus, minus. But as long as that number is a constant number, we have an arithmetic sequence, okay? So it's a sequence that has a particular pattern. And there are no rules for what number we start with or what that difference actually is. We could even do stuff like, you know, pi. And so that's our starting number, and then pi plus root 2, so that our difference is positive square root of 2. And we could just keep going, so if we added another root 2 to this, it would be 2 root 2, pi plus 3 root 2, etc, etc, right? So we could have fun with this. So, all we need is to have a starting number and a common difference and then we would just keep adding or subtracting to get all of the terms well not all of the terms we would start listing some but then notice that it keeps going on do, 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 do. assuming that we are just making it an infinite sequence right you could just kind of stop here and say okay i'm going to stop it after 10 terms or something and make it a finite sequence but if you just let it be it would just keep going, right? So, in that case, since there is a pattern, we can play around with this a bit because let's say I were to ask you, just out of curiosity, what is the 100th term of this sequence? Of this one. This is kind of like our example, our main example for today. So, what is the 100th term? So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. But what is the 100th term? Well, that would take us a while, right? Maybe for some of us even counting on our fingers to add three over and over and over. So that kind of, you know, makes us want to study it a little more and see if we can notice some patterns. So there are a couple ways to represent arithmetic sequences in general. And one is to just define it recursively. And that's just a fancy word, meaning that you're not going to directly um, say what each term is. You're going to represent it in terms of something else. So in this case, that was just very broad. But in this case, if I were to say, what is the 100th term? You would go, I'm not really sure, but I do know that it is the 99th term plus 3, since, you know, each term, um, each term is the term before it plus 3 in this case, right? So, because we're adding 3, adding 3, adding 3, so the 100th term would be the 99th term plus 3. Well, then you're like, well, what is the 99th term then? Well, the 99th term is the 98th term plus 3, and the 98th term is 97th term plus 3, etc, etc, right? 97th is the 96th plus 3. So you just keep going down back like that. So you would say my nth term is the term before it, which would be a n minus 1. So that's like still my index plus 3, right? But if I just leave it at this, eventually I would go, okay, well then, you know, 97th is 96th plus 3, my 96th term is my 95th term plus 3. Eventually I'm going to need to have a base case so that I would write a 1, my first term is 2, because if you kept tracing that back, you would say, okay, eventually go with the second term is my first term plus 3, 
but then what's the first term? And with this sort of indexing where we start with one, there is no zeroth term, so we do need a starting number. So our first number will just be a one, which is two. So this is, these two together allow us to represent this sequence recursively. Recursive. Meaning you just kind of do this in terms of another thing, but then that thing itself also is in terms of another thing, and etc. It's circular, okay? But that, you know, that would take us forever if I said, what is the hundredth term of this? Still, you know, you have to go tracing back, well, 99th, and the 98th, 97th, 96th, 95th, 94th, 93rd, da, 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 that would take us forever, unless we're given more information in a problem or something, right? So, we can also look at how to write this explicitly, which is kind of like a more direct way, which is, if I were to ask you, what is the 100th term, maybe I can play around with some patterns, and knowing this is an arithmetic sequence, I can come up with a way to just take the 100 and make it a function of n. So a of n as a direct function of n, meaning I do stuff with whatever number, th number, th <laughs> the number term I am on, and plug it in and then get an exact value. So in this case, let's play around and see if we can find a pattern. This is really exciting. So 2, 5, 8, 11, 14, and I'm just going to copy the original question down again, or just our original sequence that we're looking at today. So if I rewrote the two, so I'm going to start with my two, which is a one. So the next term is, the next term is going to be my a one, and then I'm adding three. Right, so whatever my a1 was, which was 2, I'm going to then add 3 to that to get my 5, right? 2 plus 3 is 5. This is going to be some fancy pen work here. But then, to get my next term, so that's my second term, my third term, 8, is going to be taking this entire thing, which is my 5, and writing that out again, and then adding another 3. So, like this. Like so. So, I'm, go I'm writing it out like this on purpose, so that we can notice this pattern, but let me show you. Let's continue one more step. So, I'm going to take this term, this whole thing, which is my 8. So again, I started with the 2. I did a 2 plus 3 gives me 5. And then a 2 plus 3 plus another 3 gives me 8. And then my 8, which is this whole thing again. Plus 3, plus 3, plus one more 3. So essentially I'm copying this kind of picture. The first plus 3, the second plus 3, and now I have this term. And it goes on and on and on, right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of representing this recursion, but I am going to start with my first term, and I'm adding multiples of 3. So if I were to directly write it out, I would have our first term, so my a nth term, my nth term, sorry, is my first term, a1, plus, and now I'm adding multiples of 3. First I add 1 3, then 2 3s, then 3 3s, etc., right? But how many of those 3s am I adding? Well, for the first term, I'm not adding any 3s. It's like a one-off case because the first term is just my first term. But my second term, I'm adding 1 3. My third term, I'm adding 2 3s. My fourth term, I'm adding 3 3s. So I'm always adding one less 3 than the term I'm on, if 
that makes sense, right? Because the first term is 0, 3. So I'm not adding anything to my first term. So then from there, it's an n minus 1 times the difference. In this case, that difference is 3. So n minus 1 times. Does that make sense? It's like a one-off. So I'm adding 1, 3 for the second term, etc. So if I'm going to write this particular sequence directly, my a1 is 2. So a1 being my first term, it's going to just be a n equals uh, 2 plus 3 times n minus 1. And if you want to do a little bit of algebra with that, you can distribute and get 3n minus 1. So this tells me that my nth term is going to be given by 3 times that n minus 1. And we can check this for any term, say, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The sixth term should be 17. So if we plug in to find a 6, a 6, it's 3 times 6 minus 1, which is 18 minus 1, which is indeed 17. So this is only because we are working with arithmetic sequences, right? So this pattern kind of holds because we're studying how this works. And so now, if I want to answer what is the 100th term of this arithmetic sequence, I would do 3 times 100, which is 300 minus 1. And don't forget your order of operations. Multiplication first, then subtraction, right? So it would be, did I answer that? Did I say that? I kind of lost track there. But 3 times 100, 300 minus 1, 299. So somewhere along this, da 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 da, should be 299, hopefully. So that's our general um, pattern here. So our rule will be a n for arithmetic sequences is a1 plus d, where d is our difference. So again, if it happens to be negative, that's okay, just change that and then times an n minus 1. And my a1 in this case refers to the first term. So again, if you are used to a0, adjust this, okay? Oh, I should have written, sorry, I should have written this is called, like this is writing it explicitly. Explicit form, okay? So that tells you, you plug in an n, it's a function of n, so you just plug that in and that tells you directly what the 100th term is rather than recursively, which is in terms of the 99th term, dot dot dot, right, going backwards. So, um, you kind of want to pick whichever one applies to whatever it is that you're working on, and it's a fun little puzzle here. I hope that this was interesting for you. Um, I thought it was really cute. We can also talk about... Um, um, geometric sequences and, you know, just a little heads up, it's just where you multiply by a constant and for both of these, if we made them into serieses, serieses, um, where you add these terms together, we can actually figure out some sums as well. But if you are asleep right now, I hope that you are resting very well. And if you are not, I hope that you are at least very relaxed. And I will see you again for more decaf math very, very soon. Bye!